Welcome to Biz Sugar Live. Today we have Sue Ann from Right Mix for Business to talk to us about why a mission statement matters and how to use it to craft your business direction. Sue Ann is a digital content strategist and a writer and editor who works with best-selling authors, media personalities, and prominent artists to enhance their communication, elevate their influence, and transform their creative vision into tangible business results. Go ahead, Sue Ann. Hey, hello and welcome. I am so pleased to be here to do this presentation for Big Sh Biz Sugar and, of course, for you. Um, and so thank you so much for having me, Gail, and friends. I do appreciate it. Most of you know me from Right Mix for Business, um, where I have been blogging my brains out. <laughs> if, if you saw the millions of words on my Grammarly, it might crack you up. Um, but that led me into doing some other things because, as you know, as a digital creator, there's a lot more to it than simply writing. So it's great if you have a core superpower like writing. And I started, you know, as a web copywriter almost uh, exclusively, but it sure has blossomed. And I have to tell you, I love being a digital web person, a digital web uh, creator. And so on a dare or a bet uh, or a challenge, I started the Mix Sizzle and Shake Your Business podcast or Mizzy Biz in 2017, talking everything business and content to repurpose and expand on the message from Right Mix for Business. And then that led to trying to do the another challenge and repurposing thing, which would be uh, concerning um, doing your video on, or doing your podcast, your audio um, content as a video for more repurposing and further reach. And that led me to an invitation from 100 TV. And 100 TV is a new network of creative partners, a creative partnership where small individual creators like myself are creating content. And so I'm doing a new show called The Marketing Mirror. The next one will be airing this week. Um, and it's been really interesting and challenging. And what I'm doing is a lot different than what you might expect from your um from you know from the perspective of a show like you know it's usually educational or it's um talk or or interviews what i've done is i've borrowed some friends using ai technology and i'm using text to speech um and i'm using speech to animation i'm creating animations and scenery using ai and so this is my latest project and newest hot thing but what I'm here to talk to you today is about your mission statement. And for some reason, my notes are missing <laughs> that I created um, that I'm supposed to be seeing. So I don't know why I'm not. I'm going to try refreshing this so that I can see them in the background. If you'll give me just one second, you guys, because... Um, not that I don't know this material and probably don't need these notes, but because I've made these notes, I feel like I did that for a reason so that you wouldn't miss any of the most important topics. So let me grab them. Here they are. Yay, yay. We can really get bugging, dig, dig in now. So your mission statement matters because it gives direction to your company vision or your business vision. It is the thing that motion and propels the business direction that you want to take. So it's super important that you develop out and think about, um, it's kind of along the lines of, as I talk about in the marketing mirror, my slow down to speed up your marketing. Because when you put thought into it, you put a little research and time into it, you're going to do a whole lot better job. And so your mission statement is your mission statement is meant to inspire and guide. 
that gives a strategic direction to the company's vision or higher purpose. So every business, no matter what type of business, should have a mission statement. Um, a mission statement guides your strategic direction. It defines your purpose and your values, and it offers a compelling and meaningful universal or commonly understood meaning for your business or brand. And so that's super important. And so every business, no matter the size or type, needs to think about that core message and that vision and the values behind their business and brand. So what you understand and what other want other people to understand about who you are and what you do. So it it initiates a collective directive to positively influence your business outcomes and progress. So there's a meaning to having it. It's helping you to build your business. So your mission statement is an overarching directional framework for accomplishing your vision. Think of it as your solid guiding star. And your mission statement is going to help you craft direction. Um, it's going to define that clear and concise business purpose. It's going to give you that strategic direction. And it's going to guide the execution of your specific plans in order to reach your company objectives. So what that means is that your mission further drives direction for your actions and your operations, as well as consistently threading your mission's core messaging in all of your key communications. So you can see the mission statement affects the people, the company direction, and the actions and operations of your business. Your mission statement has a pretty hefty job, right? So what goes into your mission statement? Well, remember, a well-crafted mission statement delivers that clear sense of purpose. It helps you establish your business identity, and it drives your goals and objectives. It gives a strategic mission to both internal stakeholders, and it guides external stakeholders with communications and messaging. But the complexity of your mission statement will vary greatly by the size of your company, your industry, and also from other factors. So what are the key elements to include? Well, you have to start with a purpose. And this is usually explained or, or analyzed or documented, I guess, in your vision, your company vision. So it's your reason to exist. And don't be fooled by a, a, an extrinsic, simplified reason to exist in business. Don't be fooled like I'm in business to make money. Because first of all, if that's what you're in business for, that's a rougher ride for you. Um, that's not going to get you, in my opinion, as far as you need to go and as fast as you need to go or want to go, because that's not what you're looking for as your purpose to exist is more intrinsic, right? It has a deeper meaning. So it means that you've developed a process, a product, a service for a deeper reason, a higher purpose. And usually that's to help people. So what solution do you solve? What is your higher purpose? What is your reason for being? And that, again, entails more than you might think of at first. Um, you also want to identify and help people to understand your core values or the principles you stand behind. And, you know, right now people are, I mean, I think there's even like statistics that, that fortify that people will actually do business with companies based on core values. However, I don't think you have to make a huge stand for your brand. You don't have to go into politics or socio socio cultural issues. You just need to just to really come up with the core values that demonstrate who you are as a business. 
how you want your business to operate and, and your people to operate, your team to operate, and how you want people to see you. So your core values can be as simply as, you know, wanting to be a creative business, wanting to be a business who is, you know, known for on-time delivery, a business who stands out because their process is different than anyone else. Um, your core values could be as simply simple as, you know, delighting customers and um, providing a quality product or service. So you don't have to have a big, huge, you know, I'm going to give every dollar off of every sale, a dollar off of every sale to, you know, some movement or anything like that. It's really, you know, getting people to stand behind what you stand behind, which is how you're going to deliver a, a good, um, solid product, service, or business. And by the way, I'll show you some examples or give you some examples for, um, I can give you links that we can add later, uh, for, you know, how businesses are actually incorporating their core values into things like their about page. When I was in the event business for many, many years, and I wanted to, like, really get a flavor, get a tone, get a style for a company that I was dealing with, I dealt with mostly corporate clients, I would look at their mission, vision, and values, and it would really let me get a feel for the culture of the company and, you know, how to, I guess, leverage and optimize what I knew about the company and how they operate so that I could bring that into their event or theme. So there's a lot you can do if you're aware of these things, even on the companies that you deal with. And you do want uh, to know about your target market, your ideal customer, which you will find along the way in some regards, because you will be looking at um, market analysis and target um, industry and, and market analysis. You'll be looking at SWOT analysis and those things. We'll talk about some of that later when we talk about finding your unique uh, your unique value proposition, the way that you differentiate yourself, but you're going to need that tar mar target market. That's going to certainly be a part of how you direct your mission statement because your purpose and your values are, they come about in order to serve your ideal customer or your target market. If you need worksheets for target market help, I have some, let me know, um, or I can give you some links again in the notes. Um, then it's going to really guide the scope of your business. How you're going to operate is going to fall into everything else that you're doing in establishing your um, core mission. So it's going to actually, I, I'm trying to think of the word, it's going to um, identify how you want to operate. So you have this vision. Now you have a direction that you take this vision into operations. And now you're going to really hone in on how does that actually happen in terms of action to get me there. This all has to be considered for your vision statement to go from A to Z in what you need to say. You're going to really have to hone in again on your unique value proposition. And this has to do with positioning, positioning you as a brand in a business, positioning your product service or business itself, um, or your line of products or services. So you're going to have a unique value proposition that is a framework over your company, but you may end up using selling propositions as you drill down to areas of expertise in different services and so forth. Um, and finally, you're going to pull this all together by, once you understand your vision and you have the core values that back it and you know who you serve and how you help them and you know how you're going to operate to make all of this come together and you know how you're going to position yourself in the marketplace, you now have gathered the aspirations, the objectives, and the goals of your business as a whole. And it's a long-term view. So that's the other key element, usually for a mission statement. It is a longer-term view. I actually had a mission statement that I did for my 
what started as a solo operation and, and of course grew, but even when it was just one or two people, I created a mission, vision, and value statement. I even put that information in frames on the wall so that everybody who came in understood what the company was about, what we do, what we do different, why we do it, what our goals are, how we operate as a business, because it's based on our values. These are the values that we bring forth. Forth, And honestly, over a several decade span of operating that business, I only tweaked it minimally. Now, there are occasions, as we talked about last week in Tip Talks, when you may need to do a, 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 an overhaul and create a new mission statement, but it's really a long-term view. And if you take the time to get this stuff right, one thing I should caution you of is don't get in your own way. You know, validate your ideas, validate validate your marketplace and so forth. Because as business owners and pe idea people, we get stuck on in love with our own thoughts, our own ideas, and we don't see it how our clients see it. And that's one thing that I think is super important and something to be aware of. Uh, when you're working with clients. So as a small operation or an individual proprietor, you can like bring this statement of purpose into being and it doesn't have to be a full out mission, vision and values, but it sure is going to cover some of these same important topics for how you guide and move your business forward. And so we're going to look at Donald Miller for the grunt test because your mission statement, your mission, vision, and values, your mission statement in particular, is going to have to honor the grunt test. And that is what you do, right? Who you do it for. And then you answer the question, why do I care? Why would anyone care what you do over what someone who does the same thing also does? So why you over anyone else? This is where you start to really extract and think about your unique value proposition, where you stand out as something different in the world, and how can you stand out. And again, I have these reminders about things like concise and clear and comprehensive and core, getting to your core things like core competencies and core messaging and communication, which of course is key to everything in your business and marketing. And then so you have to ask yourself, so how do I differentiate my business or product or services in the marketplace? Well, let me tell you, there are many ways to uncover, understand, and leverage what makes you stand out. For example, when you're studying and developing out your mission statement, your research might include a few things. A few things like um, research on the industry, research on an audience or a market, a target market. You will do a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, again, the market analysis. The, the thing is, all of these help you, these are tools to help you distinguish areas where you excel among your competitors or you may discover an unserved or underserved gap in the marketplace that you actually fill with what you do. Or you may have a technique that nobody else does. It could be a, a special process for the coding of your widget. It could be a process for developing out a brand strategy for a company. Whatever it is that you do like no one else does helps you to differentiate your products and services. However, there's more. So also there's identifying the those processes that you do differently than your competitors, because that is a good place to start. But where will you get that? I'll tell you, customers will tell you. So you're gonna look at, of course, customer feedback. You're gonna look at questions and comments from customers. Customers will tell you. So to me, no. excuse me, let me get a little sip of water here. I'm sorry. To me, customers are the best informational source that you have. They will straight up tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. 
and they will let you know what you do differently than your competitors because they'll say, I bought this product and yours is so much better because of this. I use this company for the same service, but they didn't do this, this, and this that you're doing. Oh my gosh, I never saw that. And that's my favorite one. When you can, as a service provider or a product provider, when you can have customers say, I've never seen that before, or I've never seen it done that way, right there, that's a super clue of how you stand out in business. So talk to people, listen to people, ask questions, check for customer feedback, use the old trick of looking at Amazon reviews um, under the subject matter that you're covering and see what people are talking about and saying in, di in direct relation to your topic. Things like that will really help you to get a good understanding. And again, don't trip yourself up thinking you know what it is that makes you great without getting this input from others. And in fact, I think probably your whole mission, vision, and value statement should have input from important people like customers, uh, team members. And listen, even your suppliers need to understand who you are, what you do, and why you're different because they can service you better when they understand what your needs are. If they understand your direction, if they see your mission, vision, and values, then they can jump on board and help serve you better. They'll know better what products you need, what software will help you accomplish what you need. So that's another reason why when I was working on events, I looked into actually learning about the customer and what was up with them because I could serve them better. And that certainly is going to hold true in anything you do through your digital work. So out of all this, you will learn to and pull out the things that will help you define your brand identity. Your vision and mission will help you understand who you are. You will understand and define, you'll, you'll be forced to define your core values, not just guess at them or change them up in a situation. Oops, I forgot to change the slide. Sorry about that. Uh, so the core values will you know, be defined and they will help. Not only will you define them, but they will define you. And these things become this mission, vision, values becomes part of a business culture, part of a company culture, part of what it's like to deal with you. Are you fun? Are you really straightforward? Are you, you know, just able to do certain things and not other things? Or do you cover a, a, a whole array of related services? So discovering and honing in on your own core competencies are also going to help you define your unique value and going to help you define your identity and your brand in the marketplace. So there's a lot going on out of your mission statement, wouldn't you say? I'm going to say it. Yes, there are. Um, and then when you get all of that together, you understand what differentiates you. You understand what you do as a business and as a product and as a service, and you understand what your customers love about you and you know your core competencies, out of all of that will come your core communications. So that is to say that what we've gone over here is we're talking about your vision and goals, which are expressed in a way with your mission, vision, and values. We're talking about incorporating into your mission, vision, and values the simplified message of what you do. So who am I and what do I do? as a business or as a company or as a service, as a product? And who do I serve? How can I help them? Who are they and how do I help them? And then why, of all people in the world, of all people who do the same or similar thing, why do they want to use you? You have to get that into that simple grunt test. And out of all of this, your mission, vision, and values, your grunt test to check that your mission and vision and values hone in on those key important topics, then comes your brand story. So your brand story, uh, again, referring to Donald Miller, explains that your core communications is something that is repeatable at every level and in every place of your business. Everyone knows it inside and out. And it really stems from everything we're doing here to develop what the core of our company is. 
And if you're familiar with uh, Donald Miller and Brand's story, you know that you are not the hero of the story. The customer is the hero of the story. And you are just the guide helping to get the customer to what they want. So you're going to take an approach into how you decide to be in the market by everything that you've developed out of taking the time and doing the research about this. So your core communications is going to come out of all these things that went into making up your mission statement. And um, OK, so we talked about core competencies, what you do best, how you can differentiate. We talked about how your unique selling proposition really stems from your unique value proposition, but it may move down into smaller divisions or product areas or service areas. But it still has that overarching unique value proposition guiding everything. And out of that comes things like branding, positioning, and talk points. And if you are condensing it down as a smaller company or even as a big company, you may end up with a statement of purpose, that single line of communications that tells everything that you need to know right there. Or it might even go down deeper and become your tagline. And you'll think about things like specialization. Where do you fit in the marketplace? Do you have multiple customer bases? How do you segment? How do you niche in what you do? You'll also have to really understand and identify who you serve that target market, that inside and outside look at a target market, who they are and how you serve them. And then um, you'll have to develop out from that, from knowing who your customer or client is, an avatar, often called an ideal client avatar or ICA. And if you need, I have a few um, links for worksheets for developing out both client avatars, SWOT analysis, and some other things I can share with you, including some samples of mission statements. Um, so again, these are the key elements that will be part of your mission statement. Purpose, core values, target market, scope of business, unique value proposition, and then how all of this will turn your aspirations, objectives, and goals into a long-term outlook for your business. So essentially, it comes down to this. A well-written mission statement defines that clear and concise business purpose. It gives strategic direction. and It guides the execution of the specific plans to achieve your company objectives. A well-written mission statement also delivers a compelling and meaningful common understanding of your business and brand. So everybody can get behind you. As my little story before said, even your suppliers can service you better when they understand what you're about. So your, missions, your mission, vision, and values often is front-facing as well as internal. And besides acting as your guiding star for all business stakeholders, your mission statement gives you that core messaging to thread into the key communications for clear, concise, and consistent understanding of your business or brand. So you take your vision, you give it direction towards your goals, and everybody understands and knows what those goals are because you're not going to hit the bullseye to attain you what your results if you don't have a clear direction, and from there, ta-da, you get the crown because you'll reach your business goals. You'll reach the holy grail of achieving what you set out to do because you have a vision of what it is, why you exist, what you solve, and then you have a mission or a directive of how you're going to get there. So I hope you found this really helpful. I'm Sue Ann with Right Mix for Business. I also have the Mizzy Biz or Mix Sizzle and Shake Your Business podcast. So you can visit me on either of those sites and my new project, The Marketing Mirror, 
I would love you to check out and I would be really thrilled to pieces if you would subscribe to either my YouTube channel or the 100 TV network and check out that show. I also love social. There's my Twitter handle because they made me lose the hyphen in my name. And so I'm showing you my Twitter handle doesn't have a dash or a hyphen in it, as does my formal name. But on YouTube, it's there. Um, and you can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Pinterest. But I love connecting with people. So thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I'll take a look um, to see if there are any questions. And I can give you some examples if you like or add them on later because I'm not sure I can get the video stuff up here uh, in the tech today. So thank you for your time on this. All right. So um, you do have a message from Jamie. And she said, insightful presentation, Suhan. Plenty to think about as I work on rebranding and moving into the next chapter of my business. Um, Sean asks, Suhan, how long should a mission statement be? Well, I've seen them really in every length, depending on the complexity of a business or company. But really keep in mind, we're looking for clear we're looking for concise and we're looking for consistent. And we want to touch on those important things that you need to clarify your direction. So you have to be really clear on your purpose in order to pull out and extract your goals. And then you have to kind of um, um, reverse engineer what those goals are to figure out what the functions of your operations and your strategies are going to be to reach that. So. Again, depending on the, some, simple, uh, the, the complexity of your organization, I would say that varies. And I did put some uh, examples of a bunch of different mission, vision, value statements in the last tip talks in the Biz Sugar Mastermind. If you're not a member of that, jump in because that stuff is there as resources for you guys anytime. Um, but I will give you some more information too on just some formulas for how you can do this because you can even start with a simple strategy statement like working from Donald Miller's grunt test, you know, those three key elements and build from there. Does that help? Hopefully. Right. So I want to clarify, she mentioned the tip talks. You can get to all the information that Sue Ann shared last week and any that she might share the rest of the month. June is mission statement challenge month at biz sugar mastermind and if you go to blog.bizsugar.com forward slash tip talk that's with a p t i p t a l k you can see a link to last week's mission statement matters that sue ann did with us on the exact topic of this webinar and then you'll see the three upcoming tip talks that talking about mission statements where Sue Ann will probably share even more great stuff. And I think so I mentioned, Gail, to you too, that this is a really a serious situation I find with clients because I do a lot of like content strategy and even content management or even social media management. And people want me to, you know, my job as a social media manager or even, you know, in marketing or content marketing is to amplify, distribute, and propel your message out to the world, your message, your wares, your services out to the world. But I find that a lot of people aren't really clear on what they're trying to to say, what their, what their message is, what their product is, what their main purpose to do social is. So I think that it really helps to take a really hard look at yourself and understand what it is you're really about, what you're really trying to do. And now all of us are trying to do like 52 things. I get that. Like we all have 52 things we want to do in our digital space and in, in creating our beautiful digital fit, footprint and painting that digital web. But if we do it haphazardly, it only kind of kicks our own butt. We, we need to have a more strategic approach so that we get better traction further and faster. 
All right, so Sean had a follow-up question. He said, you were saying customers could help you differentiate, but should you yeah. wait to get your business started and start serving customers before you create a mission statement? Um, no, I think you should. I think you should start. If most people don't, but I think it's a good idea. Like, look, I put mission, vision, value statement, and I can share that with you guys too. Um, but I put one together when I had one to two employees or one and a half employees because I had to understand and and then share to the next person and then to the next person. It grows. So if you can get a core thing, even if you're guessing a little bit at your at your client or your customer, because let me tell you, for one thing, your client is going to change. So I'll give you an example of a great friend of mine, Henneke uh, D Henneke D, I, I would never say her last name right. And the enchanting, she has the enchanting marketing blog. You saw an earlier um, slide that a drawing was hers from the enchanting marketing blog. She actually thought she was going to come in as kind of a marketing person and writer and ended up really turning into a writing coach. And how she found out that that was her calling was because that is where her customers actually led her. That was not her intention coming into the digital space at all, to be an internationally known, world-known writing coach, um, acclaimed, actually, writing coach. But when people started to read her writing and understand that she talked a lot about writing and writing technique, she was really sharing what she was learning coming into the internet space. But that honed her to her clientele. For me, I was writing a lot of copywriting, but the more work I did, the more I ended up working with other people who are writers, like authors, like book authors, people who are in the entertainment space, like YouTube, uh, big big people on YouTube, or some of my clients. Uh, some of my clients are really artistic, so I kind of kind of ended up gravitating to something I never thought it wasn't in my wheelhouse at all. But those people found something about me that clicked. And I, as a business person, I believe creativity is part of business. So you get that thing of where's the balance? Like, I'm too creative to be business. I'm too business to be creative. And I think every business needs to be creative. So I think that might have been why I ended up, whether those B2B clients came to me or I came to them. But, it, it you know, it, that even happened over time in my own case. Uh, the other thing I can tell you, if it, Sean, if it, this might help you a lot uh, to know, is that I came in and created my Right Mix for Business and my digital business completely from scratch because I was operating a uh, real life business, a, a physical business, I guess you call it. So I was operating a physical business and I didn't want people to think that I wasn't full time still there their person, their resource in that business. So I kind of started my digital writing and my writing career like in secret. And so I had to develop it strictly all through digital. So everything I do and all the clients I work with came from zero zip nothing, working into the digital space, learning about social media and content marketing and inbound marketing. And that's all I do. I rarely apply. Um, the work comes to me. So your so, so, so your people will find you, I guess, is part of what I'm trying to say. Right, so before you went into digital, what was your offline business? So I owned a company that was a catering production and event design company in the greater Pittsburgh area. And we served mainly corporate clientele, which gave me such a great opportunity to learn about so many businesses because like I said I and also um, when I first started the company or when the company started to grow I started to take MBA courses and study for my MBA and they were into TQM which was to total quality management and mission vision and values was a huge part of that and I think it's because it has so much to do with not only company culture culture that you set up, but it also has to do with how you set up your identity out in the world. It helps you to identify how you want to be perceived in the world because, you know, when you set up your values and you, you know, set your message about 
coming from you and what you're about, it really makes it easier to be clear, concise, and consistent when you understand it and then send it out. They can still change and evolve because the clients will, even in catering and, product, and event production and design, my services changed over time by with the needs of my clients. So that happens in any business. That doesn't mean it will change your mission, vision, and values. That's how steady and strong those are. I think your values don't change, but your mission and vision can pivot Evolve. or or get adjusted periodically as as you evolve into doing something different than you started out doing. And you know what? If you have something big, major that happens, um, then you might want to make a, a big change. Like you might have to really revamp if you have a complete branding change or if you have a merger with another company or if you completely you know, change your product line, like what you do. The, you know, there are reasons why you'd want to rethink this, but when you do it really well, it's more about tweaking and evolving than it is about a revamp or changing completely, in my opinion. Oh, okay. And thank you for whoever said good blog. Oh, Martin, for Henneke. Awesome. Henneke is my fave. I used to call her Heineken, like the beer, but she said that's okay because that's another good German brand. <laughs> But I love Henneke. She inspires me in my writing and my digital work a lot. Is there any other ones I'm missing here, Gail? Martin asked, have you heard about Creative Mornings? Um, I know that some people do. I, I, I know Anne Handley talked about something that she does that's like a morning journal kind of thing. I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. Um, but look i'm all for anything creative i think that business businesses forget to include creativity as an important element and i think that when you're starting in business you have to be more creative than ever because you have you know resources that are limited and so you have to make things work and that causes you by default to be creative every day right now that everything there's so much digital going on People have to be more creative than they used to be, right? So if you were a plumber and you were good at plumbing, you didn't have to be creative. You just had to be good at plumbing. But now if you're on a website, you have to be creative to make the website or creative to do social media or creative if you make videos. And so things that didn't used to be very big in the creative aspect are bigger now because of digital. Well, there's two things I'll say on that. The first is that your quality product or service will sell itself at some point. Um, and that gives you a little bit less initiative to need to be cre creative. But maybe you have to be creative because you get on the spot and there's a plumbing leak that's leaking from somewhere that no one has ever seen before. And now you have to come up with some way to do something that you've never done before to solve that problem. Um, sure. But the other thing is you can be way creative, and if you have a sucko product or service, you're, you, can be, you can create all day. Um, there are, I shouldn't say that, but there are some product services companies that kind of um, do well in spite of themselves. But in truth, you can't market a bad product and, and really have the result that, that you need. If the quality of the product and service isn't up to snuff, then your marketing's not going to save you or your or your branding or your mission. You know what I mean? So look, that that's one thing that I talk about in marketing. The best way you can serve your customer it, it, as a marketing tactic is to put in as much time and 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 work as you can in creating the best quality product or service that you can. Because when you create that best product or service, it helps sell itself. And once people get onto it, word of mouth starts and so forth. But yes, I also agree with you that to stand out in digital is a whole new other thing. And it's more important now, even for local businesses than ever before. Right. So um, Martin shared a link for Creative Mornings, which is a website where everyone is creative. It's a face-to-face -face creative community, and he shared his profile if anybody wants to grab that. 
It's creativemornings.com forward slash individuals forward slash Lyceum Martin and his spelling. L-Y-C-E-U-M. Very as, cool. Yeah, one of his Twitter things, I think. I think um, that's the other thing uh, for creativity. If you don't practice it, because some people think you're either creative or not, and I would argue that you can make it a habit like any other habit by, you know, working it, developing it, doing things to entice ideas and, and gain creativity. So I think when you're working in a group or working in a situation with other people or gathering with other creatives to be creative, even if you're on different products, projects, uh, I think it's still a really good thing. And I think there's a lot of ways to tease out creativity. All right. Well, that's one of the great things about joining the Mastermind. The Bishoper Mastermind community is full of creative types and lots of writers and other people. And editors, we affiliate marketers, podcasters. Yeah, um, well, now I'm even doing video, which scares the bejesus out of me. But here I am. <laughs> here I am doing it right because you have to step out where you're uncomfortable sometimes, and you know try things. And I think that's one of the biggest things about digital. I was kind of scared stiff at first. And I think luckily for me, I've had so much great friendship and support from the people I've met in the digital space that, you know, it helps me to like be here today and not be as afraid to come and talk to you. Right. And so, so I want to encourage people, join the mastermind and you will have a whole group of people who can help you with your creativity and that's branding what business <laughs> right a mastermind group is specifically to take a challenge you have and get other people who have probably already had that challenge to help you find the best solutions so hopefully you guys will join us i see a lot of that people solving other people's issues in there a lot of conversation and ideas floating back and forth i think you guys will love it I've been in it a long time, huh, Gail? <laughs> yes, yes. But basically, to get there, you go to bizsugar.com forward slash mastermind, or you can go to the blog.bizsugar.com forward slash tip talk or forward slash webinars, and either one of those will tell you how to join us. The webinars has replays, and this replay will be linked from there. All the videos that we've done and all the replays are there, and what's coming upcoming and all the past tip talk links so if you're a member of the mastermind you can go to the slash tip talk page and get to any of our past um, tip talks there's a direct link to every single one of them and so i'd like to invite you guys to come to our tip talk today at two o'clock central that's in about an hour and sue ann will probably be there and she was on last week's gave all kinds of great answers on this exact topic. So I encourage you to go in there and see all the resources she shared last week. Maybe come and join us this week. And that's There's about it. There's always something today. going on there, that's for sure. And again, um, the, look, that's, that, is, that solves what a lot of people have, what, what I would say is a problem for a lot of uh, creators out there is that you're kind of out there in your on your own cloud and sometimes you just need to ask a question you just need to ask somebody else who's doing it like how do you go about this or what are the best what's the best software for that or i need a mic where do i start whatever um and i, I look if, if it hadn't been for people helping me I wouldn't be nearly doing as well as I'm doing now. So uh, digital creators are a generous, and, and writers, um, people that are in this mastermind are a generous bunch of people. I want to let you know, you may know that Sean is from Pennsylvania, and Brian just said he's from Pittsburgh and hopes you enjoy your time there. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, and I love all the waterways. Some of you might know I boating is my thing. I like to swim in the river because you can swim and swim and never run out of space. Like, you can swim and swim and swim. So I, I really enjoy our area. Wow, that'd be a long walk back unless you can swim upstream. Uh, oh, so no. Um, 
the boat comes to pick me up a few miles uh, down the road where like my uh, head turns into this little tiny marble and then uh, somebody will drive the boat over to get me. Uh -oh. <laughs> so Sean has one follow-up question. Should you share your mission statement with customers or is it internal only? I believe, like there are internal mission statements or internal mission strategies. I believe it's an internal and external piece of work. I believe it's for all stakeholders. Because I think, as I said, I think that not only um, do you want everybody, in, you know, on your team to understand the direction, but you want people who are in your community and your customers to understand exactly what you're all about as well. And like I mentioned earlier, even your suppliers, because they're going to service you better if they really understand what your business is about. So I believe it's an internal, external. I think there are renditions or sometimes like a, a, a value statement, for example, they'll have a core values and this is the outlaying, you know, list of those things and a, and a sentence for each. Maybe internally they, they develop that out a lot further or they hold training to discuss it, you know, in detail. But I think it's really internal, external, all stakeholders, like I said, even suppliers. Um, the janitor has a part of your business. You know, if you know, uh, take a school district, for example, if that school's not kept clean for the children, you know, where is the anything else? If you know, every little piece matters, every part uh, internally and externally. And think about this, too. Part of what is happening now more and more is user generated content. Right. So that's you working hand in hand with your customer and with your market and with your community. So, you know, the more that they buy in and understand and know about your mission, vision, and values, the more they're in the same direction with you, the better also, right? Right. right. So, um, Brian said, you should meet Brian, and you're both m members of the Mastermind community. He said he is from Dormont and Mount Lebanon and went to Keystone. Oh, Oak gosh. High School. Yeah, you're right in my neighborhood. I went to St. Elizabeth. But I'm from TJ country, TJ, he'll know TJ, Thomas Jefferson. That would have been my, that's my neighborhood, <laughs> Pleasant Hills and Jefferson. So, yeah, let's get together, Brian, for sure. Oh, um, see, we'll have I, to make that happen. I, th I see someone else who's from Pennsylvania. I am collaborating the all over the place. I love collaborating with different people and doing different things. Like I said, I'm having a ball. I just put a new video effect for my marketing mirror, so it's going to like smoke and do magic on the next episode. So I'm always trying to find new things. And uh, like I said, when you're a digital creator, you cannot be just a, a one hat job, I don't think anymore. The more skills, the more rounded you are, the better, right? Right. All right. So you've got to so meet everybody in all meet. the areas. Right. Well, everybody should come. Come and chat with all of us in the tip talk today. And one more time, that's blog.bizsugar.com forward slash tip talk. And we thank you for you having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody, for the great questions. And um, I look forward to meeting you. Bye bye.